Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Mama Set, and we are back with Kerbal Space Program. Our mission is to get this this stacked decoupler into an orbit circular of between 26 to 27,000. I don't know if that means it needs to be an orbit that goes above that, or just can be in orbit, and then the altitude has to be that. So it could go for quite an ecliptic orbit. So what we'll probably do is we'll get into an orbit, we'll pop the apoapsis up to that altitude, and then see if that counts. And then we'll come, if it does, we'll come back round to periapsis and burn as far as high as we can go. Because my objective with this one is to see if we can get into space high above Kerbin, as opposed to space low above Kerbin. We've got a thermometer and we've got a um, temperature. Sorry, a pressure sensor on here. They're not going to be really much useful. Uh, our staging unit at the moment is big bangs. Bit. Get rid of the big bangs. Medium amount of bang. Finish with medium amount of bang. Tiny bang! Never push this button. <laughs> I want... This This gets rid of the payload. Um, so ideally I never want to do that. In the interim... Whoosh! I've spun this the wrong way. So I need to regain a measure of control so that I can get this spacecraft tilting. No. There we go. Alright, let's just stop staring at the spacecraft and stare at that. Alright, that's not right. That's the direction I want to go. I rotated myself my reference frames. I have no idea where this orbit is going. Um, do you know we're approaching supersonic speeds? Alright, so we've gone far too far south for my liking. So we want to be going... You can tell we've not got a lot of atmosphere at the moment, given that I am very much not pointing in the direction you might expect. Pull this way, if you'd be so kind. My apoapsis height at the moment is very low. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to revert that launch. Um... I tried to spin the spacecraft around. That wasn't a problem with the design, that was me being an asshat. Um, I need to tilt the spacecraft in that direction once the SRBs are done. Um, I am going to group you so that you go and fire at the same time. Alright, go. There we go, that's better. Now I'm going in the right direction. Turn the SAS on. That's us up to supersonic speeds quite nicely. We should experience a small amount of deceleration. I will just throttle up just a little bit to bounce that off. And then, there we go. You can see that's going to flatten out. And then as our fuel burn, as we burn the fuel, our thrust to weight ratio will switch the other way, and now we're accelerating again. Nice, gentle subsonic speed. Or right, perhaps this is now approaching, going in an upward direction. They're being binned off well away from anywhere they might land that might bang someone on the head. There we go. That was a much better launch. Achieved by the fact that I didn't decide, I want to spin the ship, so I'm pointing in the direction I can understand. And in spinning the ship, I ended up with a direction I didn't understand. Let's get back onto the... Make sure we've got a nice equatorial orbit. There you can see our inclination up here is slowly decreasing. Quite a bit of eccentricity, you know, so we're not actually in orbit, that makes perfect sense. 
time, Apple absence is still increasing. Let's add a bit more throttle now we're out of the majority of the atmosphere. In fact, let's just throttle up. And lean this over a bit. We're looking for a apoapsis, sorry, yeah, apoapsis on launch of 80 kilometers. Gives me a nice bit of margin to lose through deceleration due to the atmosphere. All right then, there we go. We've got a fair bit of delta V left in this stage. Bear in mind, we've not got a lot of authority or control in this section. So let's get you pointing at the horizon. What's our inclination? Oh, that's a nice tidy low number, 0.5 of a degree. Quite pleased with this launch. We are a minute away from apoapsis. So now we are looking at getting our periapsis, which is currently the center of the planet, <laughs> um, up. So. I'm going to wait till 30 seconds to go and then I'll just hit this one at full power. Well, I'll, um, let's just start burning now. Let's bring it up to about half. No, fair enough, full power it is. And perhaps this time is still decreasing, which means we're not wasting too much fuel getting this up. It's all about getting that our acceleration up. So that essentially we're going to orbit. So we are going so fast that way that we miss that way. Might end up having to stage. Yep, confirming we have to stage. Now we've got our nippy little thing. So let's. Our objective now is to circularize the orbit. And then there's orbit. Get that to 80. So we are currently burning out our periapsis. I think. I have no idea what the orbit's doing right now. I just want to get that bit. Alright, fine. Stop. Let's have a look at the orbit. You're out at quite far. <laughs> so it turns out that we've got quite the ability to go quite far. Um, so, we were, all right, we're quite far by us, so I wouldn't mind getting that up just a little bit, so let's time warp a bit and see if this mission ticks past when we get over that altitude. The answer is yes. Let's end that. So, telling us, there we go, we hauled it into the orbit, so we didn't need to get an orbit that was arranged, we just need to get the altitude that high. So, new accomplishments, broken a speed record! And we got a load of cash. Nice. So let's remove the contract thing. And yes, we are now in space high over Kerbin's water. I'll take those two. Uh, measuring the temperature in space is quite impossible. <laughs> oh. Oh, silly me. Turns out that I did actually need an antenna. Okay, so bum. <laughs> um, all this was quite wasted. All right, fine then. Um, we're not time warping, are we? No. Fine. I'm going to revert flight to the vehicle assembly, and this episode will be me learning communications. Communicator. Zooming in. Communicator. Save. Launch. Alright. Pardon the knuckle cracking. It's time to do this again! Um, I did want those together as a single stage. I will want the throttle set to around there-ish, so I don't lose too much speed. Um, I can find you that in a bit. And bang! So, as previously, Third time's the charm. Um, we won't deploy the antenna because it'll break off at these speeds. 
This will get us up to supersonic speeds. Turn the SAS on. Tilt you over a little bit. So we get to our third atmospheric cruising speed nice and quickly. I'm going to just throttle up just a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Drop it down. So, yeah, we're going to lose a little bit of speed due to drag, but we're still going up. We're going up at a nice rate. And now you can see we flipped over. Just drop, get a tap of the control again. Tap the control again. Basically waiting until we get into the dark blue section, and then I'll go full throttle. This is as much as we get a nice apoapsis, but I can still start tilting over a bit. Keeping our inclination down. Yep, inclination is currently dis descending. Once we clear 20,000, we can start looking 20,000 kilometers up. Start looking at increasing our, our speed and the burn. We are now notionally supersonic at sea level. Full power to the engines. Inclination is again still decreasing because we're keeping this on the equatorial. Yeah, we can probably tilt it over quite a bit now. Wait till that gets to 70 in a bit. That's 80 was the number we wanted. There's a bit of space so we can see the number. And stop firing. Tilt you over. And this time we won't do this burn from here. Love the engine glow. Um, this time we'll do the burn from here. So we have a better idea of where we are. A little bit of time warp. The music will cue us in when we're in space. See? Magical music. Come on. Get over just a little bit more. Alright. And right, perhaps this is still decreasing. Full power, if you please. It's engine time. So there's a periapsis. Rapidly increasing. Alright, that's that engine done. Back to here. Stage. And fire. And map. There's our scan set. Kevin Scan 1. Merrily making its way around. Alright, now we're pushing our periapsis away. So we'll wait till we're there again. This efficient. It says by not having it pointing properly. Alright. Nice. So we are in orbit. Doing. And now we want to be. I'm happy with that periapsis. Let's pop round to our apoapsis and make that the point where we see let's how high we can go. Or let's see how high we can go. I don't know where the moon is. There it is. Alright. That's close enough. Full power. <sighs> not so much a check your staging moment as a check your pointing. In this case, I was not pointing in a direction that was advantageous. We are now re entering. Let's undo that. So we are now at our periapsis. And we want to see how high we can get that. Alright, let's have a stop and a quick check. Our antenna. Oh. Let's do a quick little bit of rotation. Um, so, there's the speed record that we broke last time. Our antenna. Extend. Is 
notionally good. Antenna rating 0.5k, antenna rating 500k. So I suspect there will be a point on this little trip. Oh, we've got a lot of fuel left. This little trip where we are not going to be able, not going to be in communication range. We're going to be out of communication range. So we'll see. At the moment, we do have can transmit science, full probe control. All right. So let's. Um. Oh, what do we want to do? Well, I'd like to carry on burning, but what I'm interested in is learning a bit more about how the antennas work. So. Let's time warp up a fair bit. This will then say, Bing! You've reached your distance. Done. Thank you very much. Um, what we will quickly do in that case is pop back to the space center. Quickly check if we've got any contracts that we can fulfill. Pull that into flight above the orbit. Well, that's another cheap one we can do later. Very VIP. Explore the mun. A resolution scan of the MUN. There's nothing particularly there I quite like the idea of right now. So we will go back to the tracking station. We will go to the orbital stack set and we will fly this bird. Alright, so contracts away. Science here and now. Nope. That's the wrong one I wanted. Is that one. Tell me we can get a temperature scan. Transmit. Nice. 16 science gained. It didn't cost us too much of it. Yep. Yeah. Transmit that extra little bit of science. Thank you very much. How are we doing on power? Plenty. Um, we are in. We are in eclipse right now. So it's probably not for the best to be doing any power work, so let's get ourselves some power. There we go. And go back aboard our spacecraft. Uh, I would like to cancel. I would like to review that data, and I would like to transmit it. Hey, 16 science added. Alright, so... Don't think we're gaining. No, we're not. Thank you very much. Alright, so we don't gain anything from... No. <laughs> we don't gain anything from either of those, because... Transmitting it... doesn't give us anything useful because we've not learnt anything useful uh, yeah all right so to get the map to get the fill this out we would need to recover this information but we're not going to um, because this is not what this is about we're about seeing how high we can get this spacecraft but wait now we're at time warp 1000 so in space high over curved water is apparently mostly where we are. In space, high over Kerbin's shores, and we apparently still have communications. Yeah, we earned 12 bits of science with those ones, and 16 science with that. Excellent. We'll, uh, oh, in high over the grasslands. More beeping noises. Yeah, so you're aborting because you're telling me you've got repeats. That's fine. I will then review, reset, review, reset. So you're telling me I have the grasslands. Nice. Getting a nice chunk of science out of this probe. Oh. 
Oh, I have a Kevin Shores. No, I think we've done that one. We're coming around. Periapsis, alarmingly quickly. All right, let's get this spacecraft pointing at the horizon. Or pointing prograde at least. Turn that back on. And we will full power to the engines. Alright. So not quite going so far. So that's we have crossed the orbit of the Mun. Sort it. Full power. We've escaped! <laughs> we can actually put this thing into solar orbit. And we've still got a thousand delta V to go. Full power. Let's try not to hit the moon. Doink. Right. There we go. I don't quite know where our orbit is, but I think it'll work a bit better when we get outside the... Uh... <laughs> All right, so um, let's find out the point at which um, we lose communications. Let's see what kind of range we've got. So broadly right now, our tracking station, so we can communicate, alright, so the signal is now weak out to the MUN, okay, that's useful. Our orbital um, plotting ability isn't capable of doing the very much at the moment. And so we lose signal about halfway to Minmus, that's useful to know. So now we have limited probe control. Um, we do have, and we are going to be in a problem, I think. Our butt is facing the sun. It's not that we can do any science out here anyway, but unfortunately, well, you're listed as being in direct sunlight, which is not the greatest amount that I would think. But let's follow this probe out, and we'll call that the end of the end of the episode. There we go. Solar orbit. So we actually managed to get enough that we are going beyond the orbit of Duna. So our time is 320 days to get to our apoapsis from where we are at the moment. We have a solar apoapsis of 27,000 megameters. So it turns out that, yeah, that little engine we've got, an orbital speed of 10,500 kilometers a second, that little engine we've got will certainly get you into space. So we are technically losing power at the moment. Um, no data, no signal, limited probe control, so we can't rotate, roll, or anything like that. So this thing is basically going to be stuck with its bum towards the sun for quite a while. Um, and it's never going to get back. So that was an experiment. So it turns out that, yeah, you can get quite high. So I have been the Marmoset. This has been Kerbal Space Program, and I will join you, and you will be joining me next time. Bye for now. <laughs>